Time travel hasn't been invented yet, so in this video, we're going to do the next best thing. We're going to get to know our ancient ancestors through the many things they left behind for archaeologists to find. We're going to see the things they made and the places they lived, and through that, we'll get to know a little about them as people. Join us for the tour, and let's learn together. There is no object as Australian as the boomerang. Boomerangs have become a symbol of the land down under and were being made and used by the original inhabitants of the land long before Europeans arrived there. The objects are best known for returning to their sender when they're thrown, but early boomerangs weren't always designed to do that. The four ancient boomerangs that were found in Kinipapa Creek in Inaminka, South Australia are of the non-returning kind. The artifacts were discovered during two separate archaeological surveys in 2017 and 2018, but a full analysis of them wasn't completed until 2021. That analysis revealed that the boomerangs were carved during the 17th century and had uses other than hunting. They may still have been used as projectiles occasionally, but they also show signs of having been used in digging, fire management, and even as close quarters combat weapons. Experts think that they were made by the native Yandruwanda people. The Yandruwanda culture was assimilated when Europeans colonized Australia, but their descendants still live in the area today and have taken possession of the boomerangs. Speaking of artifacts from the pre-European era of English-speaking countries, here's a 1,200-year-old canoe that was found in a lake in Wisconsin, USA in early November 2021. Water vessels like this are known as dugout canoes and are made from a single hollowed out tree trunk. Archaeologists found it 30 feet beneath the surface of Lake Mendota. Based on its age, it's likely that the boat was made by the ancestors of the First Nations Ho-Chunk people. Archaeologists think that dugout canoes were the first types of watercraft ever developed by our ancient ancestors. This particular example is the oldest fully intact canoe of its kind ever found in Wisconsin. Taking it out of the water was a risk because of the threat of instant deterioration, but the vessel has now been coated with protective chemicals and will be coated with further chemicals for the next three years to stabilize it before it can be placed on public display. The Wisconsin Historical Society hopes to open a new museum in the area in 2026, and this canoe would make the perfect exhibit. Could you cure or prevent a hangover after drinking alcohol by wearing a ring? The suggestion sounds ridiculous, but the ancient occupants of Israel believed so. This stunning amethyst ring was found close to a Byzantine-era winery in October 2021, and archaeologists believed that it belonged to a wealthy individual who loved wine, but didn't enjoy the headaches that came the morning after drinking it. The artifact was found in Yavna near Tel Aviv and is at least 1,300 years old. It might even be as old as 1,700 years. Many near supernatural qualities were associated with amethysts back then, including the idea that they prevented hangovers. The origins of this strange belief aren't known. We do know that it existed as long ago as 320 BCE because the Greek poet Asclepiades of Samos wrote about it in his work. This is far from the first golden amethyst ring to be found in the area, but it's rare to find one with a stone of such size. It's probably fair to assume that whoever owned it wanted to show off their wealth and status, and the large amethyst was a way of doing so. A crayon was found in an ancient lake near Scarborough, England in January 2018. You might be thinking, so what? But this isn't the kind of crayon that you'd give to your children to draw pictures with. This crayon is 10,000 years old, and archaeologists say it was used to decorate animal skins. The lake is now covered in peat, which makes it easier for archaeologists to explore it. A red ochre crayon was found further along what would once have been the lake's shore. Ochre is a pigment made of sand and clay and ochre pebbles can be scraped to produce a red powder that can then be turned into crayons. 30 deer antler headdresses were later found at the same site, all of which 
appear to have been painted with either this crayon or a crayon like it. Red ochre was an enormously important color to Mesolithic era people, who used it to color everything from the walls of their caves to the bones of their dead. What we don't understand is why they did that, or what the significance of the color was. Unfortunately, it's unlikely that we'll ever get to the bottom of that mystery. Nobody knows exactly how long humans have enjoyed playing board games as a hobby, but it's safe to say it's been several thousand years. Here's an example of a board game from the medieval era. It was found in a hidden chamber underneath Viborg Castle in Russia in 2018. The game is carved into a clay brick, and the best guess of experts who've had the chance to inspect it is that it's an early version of a strategy game called Nine Man's Morris. It's a little like checkers and was once popular all over the world. A collection of coins and other artifacts were found at the same time as the board game, but the game is easily the pick of the discoveries. Viborg Castle itself is positioned on an islet close to Russia's border with Finland and has stood since the 13th century. Back when it was built, the islet belonged to Sweden. The castle has changed hands between Finland and Russia several times over the centuries and is open as a museum today. So it's a little odd that nobody seems to have noticed the hidden chamber before. When you were a very young child, you might have been given a rattle to play with as a toy. If you have children of your own, perhaps you've given them a rattle too. It might surprise you to learn that children have been playing with rattles for at least 4,000 years. We know that because a 4,000-year-old rattle was found during the excavation of a Bronze Age settlement in Novosibirsk, Siberia in October 2016. It's one of the oldest toys ever found by archaeologists, and the most amazing thing about it is that it still functions as a rattle. The toy is made of clay and seems to have been designed to look like a bear cub's head, with stones sealed inside the head to make the rattling sound. The artist who made it must have been proud of their work because they appear to have signed it with a mysterious symbol carved into the clay with a bone while it was still wet. Times have changed a lot in the past few thousand years, but it appears that some of the tricks we use to entertain our children haven't changed at all. Writing almost certainly developed in the East before it developed in the West but there are still plenty of ancient and mysterious examples of prehistoric writing in the Western Hemisphere. The oldest ever to be discovered in the Americas is on this 3,000-year-old tablet, which was found in the lowlands of Veracruz in Mexico in 1999. The symbols on the slab have never been translated, but the repeating pattern of them is a telltale sign that this is a form of written communication. It most likely comes from the Olmec culture, as they were close to their peak 3,000 years ago. Symbols have been found on other ancient Olmec artifacts in the past, but nothing quite so detailed or lengthy as this. They weren't even thought to have had a written language before the slab was found. We have no way of translating the script without finding more artifacts or something equivalent to the Rosetta Stone, and so far that hasn't happened. It could be anything, from a list of laws to a royal proclamation. Some of the symbols look a little like insects, ears of corn, and buildings, but that's about all that can be said of them. The Met Museum in New York City, USA is lucky enough to have some of the world's most beautiful artifacts in its collection. One of them is an engraving of an oval rock crystal called The Last Kiss of Romeo and Juliet. If you think you've heard that name before elsewhere, it's because it's also the title of a painting by the Italian artist Francesco Hayez, which was completed in 1823. The engraved crystal was made by another Italian, Giovanni Beltrami, a year later, after he was commissioned to do so by the aristocrat Count Giovanni Battista Somariva. He also bought the painting, so something about this image must really have spoken to him. Beltrami was a favorite gem carver of Napoleon Bonaparte, so his services won't have come cheaply, but the quality of his work speaks for itself. The image is objectively stunning, but the painting it's based on is seen as especially important in Italy because it was created at the beginning of the country's Romantic era. Putting a value on this piece is difficult because of its uniqueness and, pointless, 
because the Met is never going to let it go anyway. While we're checking out the Met Museum's collection of wonders, we should also take a look at the Hailili Coco. This is a Katsina figure made by the Native American Zuni culture of Arizona, probably somewhere around the year 1900. The figurine is more complex than it appears and is made of a variety of materials, including cottonwood, tanned leather, wool yarn, horsehair, paper, metal, and vegetable fiber. It might look like a representation of a person, but it's actually a representation of a godlike being. Zuni tradition holds that there are hundreds of different katsinam, all of which are immortal entities responsible for the weather, healing, knowledge, and just about everything else. Zuni people sometimes dress up as katsinam during ceremonies and dances, but the figurines are usually presented to young girls as they approach puberty. The dolls became popular with Western collectors during the 19th century, so the Zuni started to produce them purely for sale. The one that's in the Met's collection is thought to be an authentic model, rather than one that was made purely for sale or show. We'll check out one more artifact from the Met before we move on. This time, it's a bizarre-looking snake thread vase shaped like a mouse and made out of glass. It's in pristine condition without a single chip or crack, which is incredible when you consider that it was made by an unknown ancient Roman artist in the 3rd century. There are no other known ancient Roman artifacts that look anything like this. The shape is obviously unusual, but the color is unusual for the Romans too. Historians aren't sure whether the vase had a specific purpose. It was probably filled with wine rather than water, but it's an impractical vessel to carry around or drink out of. The Romans were masters when it came to working glass, but this would have been a difficult and time-consuming thing to make even for them. It seems unlikely that anybody would do so without a clear purpose in mind. But then again, we can't discount the possibility that it was made purely to be a novelty item. People like to have novelty items in their homes today, so we shouldn't assume that the Romans were any different. Earlier on in this video, we looked at an ancient tablet containing information that nobody's been able to translate so far. Let's balance that out by showing you a tablet that experts have done a little better with. This is a Babylonian clay tablet known as Plimpton 322. It's a little under 4,000 years old. The meaning of the markings on its surface remained a mystery for a long time after its discovery, but it's now thought that it's a trigonometric table. If they're right, it would be the oldest trigonometric table in the world. The Babylonians might have used it as more than a simple learning aid. Some historians think that this tablet, or tablets like it, might have been used to calculate angles when building temples, palaces, and stepped pyramids. The artifact was found by Edgar J. Banks in what's now Tel as Senkera, Iraq, during the early years of the 20th century. Banks was the real-life inspiration for the creation of the movie character Indiana Jones. He passed away in 1945, and so he never knew the meaning of the numbers on his discovery. Most of them are Pythagorean triples and have been found to describe the shapes of right-angled triangles using an unusual method based on ratios rather than angles or circles. 9,000 years ago, the prehistoric occupants of the land around Mount Hebron and the Judean mountains began to transition from a nomadic lifestyle to building settlements and farming the land. One of those early settlers also made this stone mask, and archaeologists think that the two things might be connected. They suspect that the mask was deliberately buried to denote ownership of the land upon which a house was built. Denoting ownership through burial was commonplace back then, although masks weren't usually involved. Masks of this kind are very rare in general. It's one of only 15 in the world that can be proven to have come from the Neolithic era. While they haven't been able to prove this, experts think that the mask might have been made from a cast taken from the face of a deceased person. Ancestor worship was practiced in this part of the world during Neolithic times, and death masks were a part of that. Despite the weight of this one, 
it's likely that it was designed to be worn during rituals. It has small holes on its sides, through which a string would have been passed to secure it to the wearer's face. That must have been a little uncomfortable. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.